I, so I think I should be able to. Oh, I have 27%. I guess I should have charged it. <laughs> well, you got to charge it. Oh, no. Yeah, but it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had zero. Oh. Okay. You should go. Okay. What are we going to start with? No, Joe, okay. is he coming? No. Um, do you. My phone was dead. Do you want to start with development services, or what's your preference? That's right. Do you guys have preference? Public works can be faster. Or do you care? Yeah, public works is fast. Okay, then let's do public works. All right, make John happy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Carrie. You have to any. stay anyway. That's a big <laughs> concern of this board. Yeah. Um, you guys ready? Yep. Trustee Fenton. Here. Trustee Dodge. Trustee Ruzik. Here. Public works approval minutes. Is there a motion? Uh, move to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of the Public Works of December 18, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Asphalt pavement maintenance. John? At the end of the 2017 construction season, we were able to um, accomplish a lot more asphalt patching um, that exceeded the previous authority that we had uh, received, but we felt that um, that the ability to get more potholes filled, some more um, water main repairs that we had done, some large ones, um, we think that uh, made sense to have the contractor continuing to do the work. So this is a request to um, to uh, approve payment for, for that extra work. We do have money in the road improvement program to cover the cost. Um, it was just a, a timing issue. When I spoke to John today, I mentioned that I thought it was a great idea that they went ahead and did something that was going to benefit all the residents and in the community. So I thought it was a good idea. So anyone has any comments or questions about um, this particular item, about the extra money that's being allocated for the pavement? Nope. Carol? Yep. You make a motion? Sure. I move to recommend to the Village Board to approve an increase of the contract amount with Crawley Shepherd Asphalt, Inc. of Chicago Ridge, Illinois, for additional roadway patching in an amount not to exceed $77,586.50. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Elevator tank number five, rehabilitation engineering. This project is a long time coming. It's, um, it's a... Uh, a uh, project to initiate the repainting of our water towers. The first tower that we're going to be doing is tower number five, which is over at Wheeler Drive and Harlem Avenue. Um, what we did is we, uh, we sought proposals from four different firms to complete the engineering consul consul consultation services for this work. Uh, the work is going to involve providing um, uh, repainting, so we'll get three paint schemes that will come back to this committee uh, or the board and uh, provide some options to choose from for moving forward and getting away from the current um, World's Golf Center that we have, if you so choose. Um, it's going to also involve the installation of a new safety railing around the top of the water tower. Currently, um, the, the top of the water tower is open uh, from a safety perspective. Um, we tie ourselves off when we go up there to do the work, but it's always a benefit to have that extra uh, railing around there. And it also provides, the railing also provides an opportunity to um, provide a new location for mounting antennas, whether they be cellular companies or some of the other antennas that we've been installing as part of our um, IT infrastructure. Um, we have uh, the police department has antennas up on top of the water tower, the fire department, even the village of Oak Lawn. Um, that communicates with uh, Oak Forest and several and, and Orland Park, several other communities um, with regards to their SCADA system. Um, we found that there's, with the, the current mounting system, there's interference because all of the antennas are, are congregated so close together on top of the pods that are up there. So the new um, railing will provide a, a new mounting location for, um, for the uh, antennas to reduce uh, interference. It's also going to look at 
um, creating a, uh, a, um, uh, a heated space in the bottom of the water tower. Um, with all of the antennas comes a lot of equipment. So we currently have a very small room inside the bottom of the water tower that's, that's heated. It's a, a controlled space. And it does not have near enough wall space room for all of the equipment. Um, when we built uh, tower, um, tower number one and tower number six, those are our two newest towers, we created a, a space on the interior um, so the whole area was heated. And so we're going to look at converting our older towers to that same space to provide a better environment. It's also going to include um, separating the water service. Um, tower, the tower has a, um, a service that gets power from the adjacent well house. The adjacent well house, uh, it, it's not needed, um, but it currently serves as storage. So we want to split the um, split the electric service so that if we do decide to get rid of the the, the building, um, we could do that without future uh, future impact. Along with splitting of the electric service, we're also going to provide an opportunity to add a generator at the site. Um, once again, going to all the equipment that we have there. Um, everything currently works on battery backup, and that has a very limited, um, limited life. So uh, adding a generator out there will um, be able to make sure that our communication system stays up under, under most conditions. The last few things it'll do, um, there's incidental improvements, uh, IEPA upgrades to our vents, uh, ladders, that type of thing. And um, the other piece of it from uh, the consultant perspective is they will provide construction oversight during the actual painting. It'll be part-time construction oversight for that. Um, that was as short as I can make it, Kathy. <laughs> John, as part of this, are we going to lose our golf center designation? That is a board decision. Okay. Minus the green Lorna Dune. Is there anyone else has any comments about the water tank rehabilitation? Is there a motion? Uh, Trustee Fenton, I move to recommend to the village board to accept the proposal from Strand and Associates of Joliet, Illinois for the elevated tank number five rehabilitation engineering for an amount not to exceed 57,600, which is 47,600 plus 10,000 contingency. Second. All in favor? Aye. Development services approval minutes. Madam Chairman. Trustee Patton. Move to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of Development Services Planning and Engineering Committee of December 18, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. I-80 and Wolf Road Interchange Change Concept Study Professional Engineering Services. Carrie, could you describe what this item is? Sure. Um, Madam Chair, actually, Chris and I are going to tag team tonight a little bit. So if you recall, in the 2018 capital budget, um, the Village Board approved $300,000 to begin the feasibility study of a possible future Wolf Road I-80 interchange. Um, we have received a proposal from V3 um, who has substantial experience in dealing with interstates, toll roads, as reflected in the staff report, the, the amount of experience that they have. This is actually not the feasibility study. This is almost like a pre-feasibility study. This is going to explore concepts and options that we have um, in um, conjunction with the village of Mokina to see what could possibly be um, different scenarios that we could pursue. This, is, um, this contract is for $42,500, um, and this will get us some um, concept plans. We'll work with the, the adjoining um, community along with V3. We'll bring that back to both um, the Village Board of Trustees as well as Mokina's officials, and then determine from there what direction you may want to go in. We're not proposing to spend the total of $300,000 right now, but we think this is a first good step to get us where we have a better understanding of the challenges and opportunities of something like that, which is a significant project. Um, could present to both communities. Also, as part of this motion, we are recommending that the um, 42500 be split with um, the Village of Mokina. We would obviously have the contract under us. We would manage the contract, and then we would ask for Mokina to reimburse us for at least 50% of that. So uh, my question is, would we not enter into the contract till we had the agreement from Mokina to reimburse us? Yes. Okay, yes. All right. Was that a yes? 
Yeah, it was a yes. Are there any questions from anyone in the audience, comments? My only comment was that long, not to go into it unless Mokina's paying half of it. Mm -hmm. Which is why you have two motions on there. You have the to basically approve this moving forward as, as outlined in the scope of services presented by V3, but then also um, that requiring the, the um, IGA with the village Mokina to co cover half the cost. As long as the first agreement is contingent upon yeah. entering into yep. the second agreement, yep. I'm good with it. Is there a motion? Trustee Ruzik? Trustee Patton. Move to uh, recommend to the village board to enter in a contract with V3 companies of Woodridge, Illinois, in the amount not to exceed $42,500 for the I-80 Wolf Road Interchange Concept Study. And I move to recommend the village board to enter into an agreement with the village of Mokina to reimburse the village of Orland Park 50% of the cost. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Stellwagen, Stellwagen Farmhouse Foundation Restoration Phase. Two bid. This, um, this project was actually budgeted in the 2017 um, budget. Um, we have gone out to bid and we are recommending approval of, here it is, <laughs> of the, um, this, the farmhouse restoration. If you'll notice in the staff conversation, um, the bids came in a little bit over what um, we had budgeted for. The Stellwagen Foundation recommended removing the picket fence installation at this time, which took $10,785 out of the scope of services. And then they were able to make up the, the um, additional amount by having some excess funds in their, um, in their funds to cover it. So we're recommending approval of moving this project forward. So this was budgeted for last year, yes. but we didn't get it done. So it's been rolled yep. over to 2018. Yep. And we'll do the we'll do the requisition, the PL, to, to get this um, rolled over into the 2018 budget. Are there any comments or questions from the public? Trustee Button, do you have any <clears throat> questions? Okay. We just, Is there a motion? The Stellwagen Farm Appre Foundation appreciates this being passed and moving along. Uh, Madam Chairman? Trustee Patton. Move to recommend to the village board to approval of the bid from Lauer Enterprises Inc. to com oops, to complete phase two of the Stellwagen Farm Foundation restoration project with a budget adjustment as recommended at the December 17, 2017 Stellwagen Family Farm Foundation meeting and as indicated in the fully referenced motion below. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Sir Thomas Center Multifamily Residences. Okay. So the purpose of this petition is to construct and maintain a three-story, 16-dwelling unit, multifamily residences at 14205 Union Avenue. Uh, the project has, the project that looked at this current location had many land use issues that we were able to address through this project in terms of some illegally constructed uh, roadway, pro uh, roadway elements, parking, roadway access, driveway access, and then also some uh, non-compliant piece, piece of parcels that were there. So as part of overall this project, the uh, resolution or the solution of that is we'll address all of those issues and provide a 16-unit residential, multi-use multi <coughs> residential development at that location. A little bit. We actually have representatives from Sotoma here tonight. David Sasson represents the petitioner as well as we have Gus um, Vandenbrink, who oh, there he is, who's here. And then I believe we also have an attorney here who's representing the adjacent property owners, which is the Cooper family. This is the location of the, the funeral home, the now vacant funeral home that sits on um, Union Avenue. This um, project will provide independent living residences for adults with disabilities. As Christine mentioned, it is 16 units total. Um, they have chosen this site, and I'll let them speak to why they've chosen it as well, because it has many amenities within walking distance of, these, of the proposed use. This piece of property is, um, the funeral home was built in the 1930s. So that kind of sets the precedent and to kind of talk about how much <coughs> this area has changed over the course of many, many years. We are, as the staff was dealing with the, um, this project and taking it through the public hearing process, as Krishid mentioned, there were many, many obstacles that we were trying to address at one time to clean up this area. And when I say clean up, what I mean is there's some obsolete platting. There was issues with encroachment within the, um, 
the village um, property as well as the adjacent Cook County Forest Preserve property. There was not a clear um, public access um, for the adjacent um, private properties that are located in the area as well. So all through the last few months, we've worked very closely with the petitioner to address all those issues. One of the things I, I did email each one of you um, a few days ago, the PowerPoint presentation that was presented at the public hearing. Obviously, we don't do that level of detail at committee here, but I thought that was good background information to kind of share with the committee all the different challenges that are, that are encountered with this particular piece of property. I am happy to say that all those issues have been able to be resolved with the proposed site plan. In addition, this is part of the VCD district, which is the downtown zoning district. So there's um, ability to have pretty um, high densities in these areas because they're so close to the train station, which is one of the, tents, the, the intent of the VCD district. This is extremely low density. We're talking a total of 16 units. The majority of those are one bedrooms. I believe there are two two bedrooms, if I remember correctly, off the top of my head. And so you're, you're not talking about adding an, a lot of intensity to this particular area, both in terms of people living there, but also in terms of traffic and all those related concerns that you may have in a mixed-use, higher-density zoning district which this is. Um, I'm going to quit talking now, and I'm going to let the petitioner, Mr. Sassen, um, speak. And then if you have any questions for staff, we're available to answer them. Thanks. Thank you. Um, this, uh, for the record, David Sassen, on behalf of the petitioner. Um, th we've been working on this project for nearly a year. Um, and the challenges more were for what is there than what is planned to be there. Um, a roadway that really is on the forest preserve property as an encroachment, uh, a, a not uh, a street that's far out of date, a, a obsolete nursing home, um, all these all these problems and the parking situation that potentially could be there with another use, um, and of course half the property is in the VCD district, half of it is not. Um, we're just very pleased that we're able to accommodate some of the problems for our neighbors in the village and still go ahead and, and provide 16 people, most of whom, if not all of them, are re residents of Orland Park, children of residents of Orland Park, or adjacent suburbs uh, in an environment that complies with the funding requirements for Satoma, uh, near amenities, near a train station, near all the shopping, near the village, Triangle District, um, it all fits in and it's not easy sometimes to fit it in. Um, the other thing that, um, I, that I see that stands out is what a minor uh, impact this will have on this area and what a major impact some of the developments that could be potentially between four and five times as intense could go on this property based on the zoning and the floor area ratios. And that was pointed out at the district. Um, I've included, uh, I didn't realize that uh, the staff was gonna have all that material for you. I'm, and uh, I know there's just a committee, but you have a booklet there. It's the same booklet we gave to the plan commission when they approved this. And one of the things that I wanted to uh, mention is there, there's a number of letters from mayors of adjoining towns. Um, that I felt were important that you see uh, what good neighbor Sir T Tome is. They've been in existence for almost 50 years and what a great service they do for all of us in our area. So we're happy to be here. With, with me is our executive director, and Ann Kern, who I've worked with very closely. And we're here to answer any questions or concerns that you may have. Get it. I have a question. Uh, yes. The forest preserve um, encroachment. Yes. Um, does that have to be handled as part of this before anything can, before, because they're not easy to deal with, you know no, that. No, we sent them notice, <laughs> and we have not heard from them. Um, the next step, um, we, we know that we are going to need their permission to go on their land to fix the encroachment. If they choose not to respond, we're going to be back to the village and the village engineering department to see how to proceed. But our project will be done completely on land that 
Sertoma owns. There's also a land swap as part of this project where we're going to acquire a parcel of land from the village to have the building all the way to the north and then put the street on the south side of the building so that it can service the Cooper property and put in a proper street. What the Forest Preserve does, um, we all know, um, but we're, we'll certainly will contact them. One of the things that we didn't want to do is contact them and just say, um, we want to tell you there's an encroachment here and you've got a problem. Uh, that would not be a neighborly thing to do. Who knows what they might do. Once this project's approved, one of the conditions that the staff put on this project is that we not interrupt the use of that street on the north side for that Cooper residence until there's a properly constructed street on the south side. And that's one of the conditions. We're fine with that. That's just the right thing to do. So um, to contact them too soon might be problematic. Yeah, and, and we think that we'll get cooperation from them because we're removing an encroachment and they're restoring it back to the way it should be. And I, I don't think the cook, the forest, they would, that would be well received as opposed to what they have out there today, which they probably weren't even aware of because it's been there for so, so long. But obviously through the public hearing notice, we knew that they were going to be notified because they're adjacent property owner. We wanted to make sure we had a solution for that. And I think they'll be pleased with the solution. Good. Okay. One of my questions questions is and there's a picture in here how did the village allow a motorhome and a huge trailer <laughs> to be allowed parked up in there is it that we don't check on things or well not necessarily but um, I would have to take a look at it um, that would be obviously the property maintenance issue right um, but that is certainly something that it's it's tucked up there unless we got a complaint more than likely It's all owned by the same property owner up there It's highly unlikely it would arise to a level of priority given the fact that there's really nothing else that's happening up there okay. If I had to guess <laughs> Are there any other members of the public that would like to speak? Could you please state your name? Yes. Good evening my name is John Newton. I'm an attorney. I'm here on behalf of Cynthia Thompson, formerly Cynthia Cooper, uh, who is the adjacent property owner that was just referred to, a uh, brother of Bruce Cooper, who's also here in, in the audience. He also has property in the area. Uh, but I'm speaking on behalf of Cynthia. Um, you know, we've mentioned this at the Planning Commission meeting, and I want to be consistent and fair. Um, my client has no objection to Sertoma coming into the village of Olin Park. Um, what they do is good. It's noble. Um, but we don't believe because they do good things that they should be able to build anywhere within the village. It needs to be some place that makes sense. And it's my client's opinion that this does not make sense in this location. The reasons for that are varied, but uh, without taking up 20 minutes of your evening here, I've sort of summarized it to looking at the special use requirements that are, are necessary, um, that it doesn't <clears throat> have a visual impact that's adverse to the area we think that it is this is basically a street union street that is not designed as a cul-de-sac but acts that way of single-family homes um, this is going to be a three-story 16 unit apartment building basically at the end of that you know again for lack of a better term cul-de-sac at the end of the street um, nothing like that exists we do think that it basically scars the look uh, of the street of modest single-family homes that have never had anything like that there uh, we do think that it has an adverse financial impact on the property owners uh, simply because when you go to sell your property the fact that there's an apartment uh, right next door will discourage some buyers and we believe that um, and these are just some of the factors when you look at what's uh, considered the standards for special use permits in Orland Park um, beyond that uh, you know We've heard a lot that there could be more high impact developments proposed for this site. Of course, our answer to that would be, well, if there were, we would be here and we would be objecting to that. Uh, we don't think it makes sense on, for this small street on the west side of Southwest Highway uh, where that doesn't exist today. Um, again, if this were all the properties being purchased and it was a greenfield project where everything was torn down and revamped, uh, then perhaps, but at this point, that's not what's happening. A few lots are being consolidated, roads are being vacated, special uses and variances are all needed, which shows that this doesn't really fit where it is without great sacrifice. 
I understand this is an older street and there have been non-conforming uses that have developed over time. This isn't a recent PUD that complies with all the village standards. However, we think any future development, these issues could be corrected in that they've existed for this long period of time. For them, they have to get corrected right now uh, to allow this, we don't think is fair. Um, we do believe that other uses, whether they be more single family homes if that were considered, or even a less impactful multifamily homes if they were single story town homes or even two story town homes. But this proposal is a 16 unit, three story apartment complex. Um, and so for those reasons, we think the impact is gonna be very high and adverse to the property owners. And beyond that, we look at, for example, the weather we've had here today in the snow. Um, we know that many of the residents will be pedestrians walking. Not all of them drive, although some may drive, as I understand it. And there isn't a requirement that if they happen to have more driving capable residents, that there's a limit that only 50% of the residents could drive. So the number of cars and the impact with the vehicular traffic, I think, is uncertain. We know there will be more pedestrian traffic in the area. The funeral home has not operated, as I understand it, and I don't have a last date of use, but I understand the last funeral was more than a decade ago, and a lot has changed in the village in the past decade. A lot of development, good development, but it's led to an increase in traffic, and that was discussed at the plan commission meeting as well. There is a lot of traffic in this area. Adding more cars, adding more pedestrians moving about, trying to cross 143rd, perhaps, but hopefully not, crossing Southwest Highway, um, could lead to accidents, could lead to problems which we would rather not see, of course, and whether or not a traffic study, which isn't required due to the scale of this development, might be recommended considering the impact here and the changes in the area that have occurred over the last 10 years. Um, again, from my client, Cynthia Thompson's perspective, um, she's happy to see Sertoma come to the village of Welland Park. She agrees they do good things. She does not object to what they do, and she's a fan of what they do. Uh, it's all very good and it's very noble. But just because it's a noble cause doesn't mean it should be rubber stamped at any site that is selected. We think it needs to make sense. It needs to make sense for Sertoma. It needs to make sense for the village. But it also needs to make sense for the residents who are immediately impacted, the neighbors of the proposed development. So for those reasons, we'd ask the committee to consider those factors and that we'd like to see this development not proceed as planned, not until further traffic studies or other uh, concerns can be addressed and of course the overall scope of the project and design is something that we object to in its size and scale because we think it's far too much for the immediate surrounding area thank you for your comments thank you very much um, can, do you want me to address some of those yeah if you would um, I can address uh, most of those between Christine and I and I'm sure David could address a few of them as well. I guess my first, my and this was discussed at the um, the public hearing as well, and I was in attendance at the public hearing as well. I think the first, the, my first response would be is that I think we need to take note of what is currently zoned for and what is what was the use of it, regardless of whether it was vac it's vacant today or not. And clearly, this was um, a commercially zoned piece of property that um, had a funeral home there. If you look at uh, generally accepted industry standards for traffic engineering and traffic counts and this man here is a traffic engineer as we have another one here in the audience he used to work for the village actually if you were to look at those things you would find that a funeral home generates more traffic than what's being proposed tonight so what you actually have is you have a less intense development replacing a more intense development I think that's the general premise I want to make sure that we're all on the same page for tonight um, as far as, a, as the, the feel and the look of it, if you look at the renderings which are in your packets tonight, which were again shared um, at the Planning Commission public hearing, this is a very um, traditionally looking um, building. It, it looks like townhomes. It was designed to look like townhomes. The architect who's not here tonight but was president at the public hearing referenced that, that a lot of the, the architectural elements that you find up there in the single family homes in terms of the, the gable, the, the, the pitch of the roofs and things like that, the character is reflected in the attached elevations that you have before you tonight. Again, it's only 16 units, three-story building. Um, it has a very residential feel. One of the um, 
the gentleman mentioned um, about how this is resulting in um, you know roads that are being vacated and, and things like that. I want to point out that all the all the access up there to that point that we're cleaning up as part of this project is there was no dedicated right of way up there. It was basically a a driveway or an alley at best to get to provide access to the adjacent property owners. What we're going to have once this project is constructed is a fully constructed dedicated new road that will provide um, a, um, a public access to those neighbors who sit there today or even if that area continues to redevelop over time, you'll have, you'll have a new road, new road network as well, which is a good thing. Um, we, we, looked, we took a look at the parking requirements. If you'll notice in the staff report, um, again, the majority of these are one bedroom units with the, with the exception of two that are two bedrooms. If you look at the site plan, we actually agree with the petitioner that this is going to generate such insignificant um, traffic and parking impacts on this area that we're actually proposing and recommending that a portion of the land be land banked for future parking. So we can take a look and see whether what the code requires actually needs to be built now. So that's, this could result in actually having more green space back there than what we have today um, under the existing use. Um, again, I think that we won't need to construct those additional parking spaces, but you never know but we have the ability to do that and meet our code as well. Um, we're saving a, a number of um, significant um, heritage trees that are located on the site. Again, as a preservation and buffering for the adjacent um, property owners as well. So those are the kind of the comments that I had as I was listening to um, the, um, the, uh, the gentleman speaking. I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that, David, that I might have missed, but. It's kind of my summary right there in response to the, the concerns. No, um, just finally that um, we looked at all of the conditions in the area and all the concerns. Sertoma is, has multiple facilities that they manage. and They know what to do and how to do it. And we work with the staff to show that. And one example of that is, uh, by doing a three-story building rather than a two-story building, we're able to save all those trees and provide all that open land and um, have a, a much, um, much better site for the neighbors while cleaning up these streets and putting in a proper street. Um, this nurse, this um, funeral home uh, has been used intermittently but could be used by a new purchaser at any time. And I think one of the things that is very important is we, sur we have notified all the surrounding property owners as required. One of those is the school, which is not uh, unimportant. And they had no comments whatsoever at the hearing. So I think that speaks very well. And, and the fact that there's a, a neighbor, um, I've been doing this a long time, you can't satisfy everybody, but we've certainly tried and we will be good neighbors. So thank you. So I had a question. Um, I noticed from your uh, the description of Sartoma's activities or their other, it, it mentioned that you have 11 residential properties throughout the southwest suburbs. Are any of them multifamily like this? OK. We have another 16 unit building. Stand up. You'll have to give your name. Uh, Gus Vandenbrink from Sertoma Center. Um, we have 11 uh, properties. We have uh, actually 10 just homes in the community throughout the suburban area. And then one is a multifamily 16 unit, three story apartment building in Homewood. Okay. So can you tell me, based on that experience, do, are most of your residents? Um, driving cars are they um actually the we w don't anticipate at a, <clears throat> excuse me at our homeward apartment homewood apartment building approximately four out of 16 drive and then there's a property manager come and go maintenance a little bit but so really the number of cars would be far less than you would expect okay okay that's all i have thank you do you have any questions um no i he answered the question i was going to ask about that and so the, all the one unit bedrooms, one unit apartments, they're strictly for one individual and that's it, correct? 
and then the maintenance person or the property manager is are they at the site the entire time 24 7 or um, we would be managing the property as well and they would be coming and going as any apartment building property manager I would estimate they may be there um, a day or two a week I can't remember exactly what I wrote in the proposal um, just doing the things that they need to do for managing the property and also some of the individuals will be visited by um, some program staff and stuff so there'll be a program staff or two coming and going to visit with them there's a room for them to do some counseling and talking and there's also a community room for them to have some group meetings or for the apartments uh, we always have a, um, a community um, council so the uh, tenants can get to know each other and do things together so they'll be using that room for that and some of them may have they might be a couple living together as well if they're married right yeah yeah in the in single the bedroom, bedroom up to two people to could go because if they have a partner they could live with a partner yes okay. and then oh sorry. sorry one last question like any other multifamily rental um, uh, property in the village, they would be subject to any ordinances yes. that apply to them, such yes, as crime free housing, inspections, yep. registration. Yeah, okay. and also we are we tend to be more intense on those things. We will be doing our own inspections. Okay. Um, and we Great. also, every individual has a lease like any other apartment building does. And actually, our criteria, criteria for selection of tenants will probably be more restrictive than a general apartment building. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions or comments from the public? Is there a motion? Madam Chairman. Trustee Fenton. Uh, move to recommend to the Village Board of Trustees to approve a special use permit with modification, site plan, preliminary landscape, elevation drawing, subdivision, and rezoning for the Sir Thomas Center project as recommended at the January 9, 2018 Plan Commission meeting as indicated in the below fully referenced motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We'll take it be back out in twenty minutes. <laughs>